Oh, a gobble gobble, Jake. Oh, happy Thanksgiving, Garfield. A very special we're here to help. Yeah. And we hope everyone's having a lovely day with family and you friends. Guys are we're with hoping your to families. have a lot of and we're hoping uh, there's a lot of fallout so but that also, we get a lot yeah. more calls. But also, Garf, on Thanksgiving, a day to be yeah. with family. You've snuck you're off. Real. You're What's listening happening? to the yeah. podcast. Yeah, you you're probably goofball. St stuffing stuff into a dead bird right now <laughs> while you're listening to this, trying to probably uh, find maybe another get ready. episode. Maybe but get you can't ready. Yeah. Touch your phone because you're covered in giblets and guts. Anyway, now, what enough. A, hold on. No way. This is a wonderfully fun day <laughs> to cook food, listen to podcasts, maybe watch some football. And be drink a people. little wine at 145. Now we're talking or either. Kevin, happy Thanksgiving. Gobble, gobble, Kevin. Kind of annoyed that you guys made me record this morning, but... uh, <laughs> Kevin, fall in line. Come on, we told you, we're a team. We're doing yes, whatever sir. Jake says. Uh, we yes, want to say we are grateful to everybody who has listened and come along on this journey with us. It has been way more fun than we expected. We are all recording from our closets, and we weren't sure you guys were going to come with us, and we have been blown away by the numbers. So we are grateful, and thank you guys for coming along with us. We're going to make a lot more, and we hope they get even better. Exactly. And uh, today, we, uh, while we're talking about um, <laughs> stuffing birds, we have a, an interesting uh, call Um from a, a pet owner, and yes. uh, dare I say, I I get a little caught up in it, um, mm -hmm. and, and we find our way out. And, and while we're talking about being with family, we talk about a mother's gift that might be a little bit too much. Look at what we did there. Here's the truth, everybody. Beautiful. It is not Thanksgiving while we are recording this. Jake, we did not know this was Jake, a Thanksgiving Jake, episode, Jake, but Jake, we are pros, Garfield. Jake, Jake, sorry, Jake, sorry. It's Thanksgiving. But look at what we did with the okay, okay, with thank the dog you. and the stuffing right, with the family. Okay, all right, buddy, I'm come back down hot, to earth. Baby. I love when a setup almost works. <laughs> yeah, it's it's so close. it was too perfect. But thank you again, everybody, and uh, enjoy the uh, holiday episode. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Gobble, gobble. Hi. Hi. Welcome to We're Here to Help, where we're going to try to help. You're on uh, with Jake and Gareth. Can I get uh, your name, uh, roughly your age, and where you're calling from, please? Yes. Oh, fuck. I'm so excited. Um, my name is Shannon. I'm calling from Tampa, and I'm 29. Can we just say what a great attitude you have? Agreed. And also, <laughs> Shannon, best, I think I'm best so attitude. fucking excited. I'm pumped. I'm so fucking excited. Best attitude. I I'm excited, oh, Shannon. Yeah. <laughs> right. Jake just ran through a wall. <laughs> I'm running through walls as we uh, speak. Shannon, hold Me on. Too. We need to take Me a pause. <laughs> okay, Shannon. So, uh, Tampa 29, what can we help you with? So, I was given a heads up by my younger brother um he's 27 which is relevant okay. that my mother would be giving me a box of my old thing sometime soon and he was warning me because he'd already gotten said box and when he opened it up he found every single one of his baby teeth oh. in an in an envelope with it's assigned um, the date it was lost and where oh. it was located in the mouth. <laughs> oh, mom. What's mom's name, by the way? Manson. <laughs> Manson. <laughs> mom, what, what, mom's what's name mom? is Teresa. Sweet mom Teresa. Is Teresa. Uh, dad, or my brother is Connor. Interesting you called your brother dad. Let's get into that shit. Uh, <laughs> That's don't... another call, Jake. Keep her excited. Hold on, hold on. Gareth, I just entered a new tone, which I really like. I and let's it. talk. Let's talk about your relationship. We're not here Connor. to Freud. Okay, I agree. I agree. Moving on. <laughs> well, I think that was on my mind because my brother is a dad. And mm. so I was thinking maybe like Is my he a mom... good parent? Is he saving the teeth of the child? No. He's he's a fairly new parent. His kid's only like four months old. So Okay. okay. He's got time. But I'm wondering, like, did she send him that thinking, oh, well, he's a dad now. So, like, maybe right. he'll want to do this, too. I don't I don't know. And so, so you have not gotten this gift yet from Sweet Teresa, correct? I have not received my teeth. No. OK. And you are anticipating you'll receive the teeth. Now, the, the question is basically, what the <laughs> what hell do, do you do, do, do <laughs> when your also... mother gives you a box of teeth? 
I think the question's also in two parts because I know what she's going to do with it the is. teeth. Throw them right in the garbage can. But how do you react to your mom handing you a box of dead teeth? Well, just in case, my brother has held on to them until, because I told him I was coming on this podcast to ask you about this. Mm. So Connor still has his he's, babies. He's held on to the teeth in case we can come <laughs> up with some kind of fun. Ooh, uh, Shannon, <laughs> imagine this dark Ooh. turn. Let's. I got a dark turn for you, Shannon. Imagine if your mom didn't save your teeth. Oh, just God. sweet Connors. And a couple imagine. of years go by, and then you go like, "Hey, mom, go ahead, give me the gift." And she goes, that "What is... gift?" And you go, "My teeth." And she goes, "I didn't save your filthy teeth." Only that is sweet the Connors. wild card. That's you are anticipating card. a problem that potentially could turn yeah. into an irritant. Yeah. <laughs> if, if... I haven't been... Wow. I hadn't well, even. Let's... I hadn't even considered that yet. Let's yeah. hope that that happens because that's the funniest outcome. But let's assume and easiest for me <laughs> and easiest for you. Let's assume you're going to get these teeth. Um, okay. What the hell do you do? First of all, I will say I stumbled upon this phenomenon uh, doing stand up and found it <laughs> hilarious one night when uh, I think someone told me they found their baby teeth at their mom's yeah. house and they were like, what the hell? And then so I started doing. But then what I found was. Many people were like, I saved my son's teeth. And it was like, I was the crazy person for sort of oh. pointing this out. So I, it's a very, very, very strange thing. I would assume, Jake, your reaction as a parent, you're not it's, doing it's this? It's complicated. Well, it's complicated. I, I wasn't sure what I was oh. going to say here because, uh, you know, part <laughs> of this, well, part of this is if, you know, if any young listeners are listening, which they shouldn't be, is... <laughs> You know, part of the game of parenthood is the gamemanship of the tooth fairy, mm -hmm. you know, Santa and everything. Mm -hmm. And in our house, I do the nights. So in terms of the teeth, that is, you know, quote unquote, my gig. And That's I say quote gig. unquote, because maybe the tooth fairy is real, right? Sure. Keep it up. And, and so I have had, let's say I am the one doing it. I have had those moments where I've snuck into a child's room and I've held on to a tooth and I've walked out and thought, <laughs> I got the dollar bill under there, big win, I rolled it up in a little ball, they didn't hear me, which is one of the most anxiety-driven moments as a parent when you're sneaking in because you think, if your kid goes, what are you doing? You just have to go, tucking you in with a dollar bill <laughs> or, in my or hand. Or you go creepy, you go, I'm stealing your tooth money. <laughs> yeah, that would, be, that would be the game. Or as a kid, you were fake sleeping the whole time and yes. busted. But that's what thoughts you have to go through and you tiptoe in and you've talked to other parents about it and it's a it is part of the scary nightmare. But what I'll say I do it is throwing out your kids teeth. I'm going to go on Teresa's side here is shockingly <laughs> is shockingly sad. Interesting. Because you adore those teeth. You watched well, them grow and then they but, fall out and that means they're not babies anymore. So I have not thrown out my kids' teeth. You have them. No, but yes, wow. but here's where I'm a what? trash person and this is where I'm gonna embarrass myself. I haven't put them in a safe spot. We where have are a bookcase. Oh, I God. just I just store oh, them up a bunch. So Jake, Jake, they just like Jake. They're, they're littered they're around. Oh, Jake. You don't even know who they belong to. <laughs> There's just dead baby so teeth you don't know around. Whose this is teeth embarrassing. Are whose. This is gross. Yeah. This is, <laughs> just have like amazing. a small box filled yeah. with teeth. No, not even in a box. Even worse, Shannon. They're like behind books. Like it's, there'd be like oh no, a really high shelf. I just toss them back. It's it's phenomenal. <laughs> oh it is God. the perfect. I know. It's by trash. the way, is it's there trash. a better encapsulation? <laughs> <laughs> of when your buddy becomes a parent, then the soft, sweet tenderness of, gosh, my little girls are growing up. Yeah, it's amazing. I should save these because it's a way to hold on to an innocent time that is sort of fleeting <laughs> versus the man from Chicago <laughs> who is just like, I'll just put him on top of a bookshelf, figure it out later. Well, because I, I'll you know what? I'll just toss him up here. <laughs> but Shannon, here's why. Because your mom is in a tough spot because she doesn't want those teeth either. Clearly. Yeah. She's yeah, she's trying to she's trying to clear out some some closet space. Yes. You have a pitch, Jake. I got it. I got something. You go first, Garf. Okay. I uh listen, this is you're not gonna want the teeth. It's gonna be pretty easy to throw the teeth out. She, if she gives you the teeth, I would just get rid of the teeth. But you 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 have no connection. It was probably she was pulling a move like Jake was. I Jake alluded to something earlier that I think could also work. And this is kind of the uh, you're kind of pushing the pressure back to Teresa a little bit here. 
Um, and that would be you and Connor take your teeth and yes. you get a little sort of uh, jeweler's felt. Mm. And upon the jeweler's felt, you place these teeth in some sort of uh, mouth order and some sort of like uh, oblong <laughs> circle deal. Uh, and you encase them. And for Christmas, along with fun. a much better gift, you and this Connor have gifted Teresa, the architect of this awkwardness, with a sort of pink, yeah. purple felted display of teeth for her to do with what she wants. Oh I my think God, there's I something. Can see it. Yeah, I think that's fun, actually, Garf. Because obviously, what In you like could do the shadow box. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Because Shannon, here's the here's the easy advice, right? You just you take them, you throw them out, you give your mom a hug, or you tell her you don't want them. That's kind of nothing. You're calling in because you I think you want something fun, and I think the Garf man found it. Correct. I think I think you gift them back. You could either do that. What I was thinking when he was saying it is you could turn them into a really scary, gross necklace, oh. and, and you could <laughs> give them back to her so that your mom goes. What the fuck do I want with this? And you go, hey, exactly. same. It's now yours. Yeah. And then as now a game, you, get it. <laughs> you can gift each other back and forth these. And then when Connor's kid starts growing up, when the first one comes out, you've started a fun family tradition. And that is Amazing. you start saving them. And then, Jenna, if you end up having kids, the first thing you do when that first tooth falls out is you're not sad. You just go like, I've just started the gross necklace. The bit begins. The bit <laughs> begins. And I think you, Connor makes his, and then when you get yours from your mom, you guys do it at the same time. And I think you turn it into a really fun thing, but I think you make a horror gift based off dead baby teeth. Oh my god! This I is like amazing. it. I I like the I like the game legacy a lot. Same. And you know, it yep. wouldn't even necessarily need to be necklaces only. You could open yourself up to. All right, what are you going to? What are your children going to give you with yeah. that they've made out of their teeth? <laughs> um. So Shannon, I think we've given some pretty solid one on this one. We kind of have come together, the Garf man yeah. and uh, and uh, myself, and kind of said we should take these teeth and turn it into a gift that you give back to your mom in a loving, funny way. So you're also saying, thanks for being a good mom and caring about us, but these also, gross take your dead teeth are back. yours. Take yeah. your garbage right. back. Right. And please, so- Please she, take a moment to recognize your strangeness. <laughs> exactly right. And so Shannon, what do you yeah. think you're gonna do here? Well, I, I gotta say, I've been listening to the, the podcast since you guys started it, and Thank you, I Shannon. think it's pretty rare for you guys, I think it's pretty rare for you guys to end up on the same page at the end Correct. of the week. Correct. Yeah. These pieces of advice. So good for you guys. Thank you. Um, oh, what a great as, way to. I also, Shen, I like your positivity and your vibe. Great attitude I, from top yeah. to bottom, from yeah. the top row and the bottom yeah. row. Let's do this, Gareth. Amazing. Next time I'm being mean and being mean to you in an intro for no reason, calling yep. you Fat Aaron Paul or <laughs> Baby sure. Ginger. We don't need to, yeah, yeah, because you're kind of doing it again. So don't. Okay. You know okay. what I mean? Uh, yeah. Let's bring Shannon on. Great. Yeah, just bring right. me on. Shannon, will I'll you bring be you guys the, back together? Will yes. you be the show therapist and keep us on vibe when I'm being a dick for no reason? Yes. You're spot on. That's literally my job for a living. So yeah. Oh, is that uh, right? I'm sorry. Uh, uh, that's you're great, a therapist, but... Shannon. I'm a therapist. I'm what sorry. do you specialize in? You're excellent. I um, <laughs> Shannon. You. Shannon, Hold you're on, great. Gareth. Hold I... on, Gareth. <laughs> what? Oh, wait, we've got huge breaking news. Huh. Look at our producer, Kevin, quickly. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Hey, Shannon, I am rocking a necklace. Oh, my God, Kevin. What are that you is, wearing? <laughs> uh, several layers of uh, fake teeth. I'll send you a picture. It's uh, very stylish. It's very in. All the kids think it's very cool, and I'm oh. very relatable and normal now. Kevin, so. Kevin. What is What's happening? So, to, Shannon, really, he's wearing a double choker with teeth got, around it. This has not been set Connors up. Connors and Shannon's on. What, what is happening here, man? This troubling. is one of the weirdest things I've ever seen. <laughs> this is uh, just for just for my story. Yes, this is yes. Uh, my uh, fiance's necklace that she wore on our first date, and uh, I did think it was all real teeth. It is not. Okay. It is okay, uh, fake teeth from a dentist. Um, okay. But, as you were pitching this, I asked her to uh, put it on me, and I said, I'll explain later. <laughs> yeah, okay, I, uh, I saw Kevin sitting there with uh, two tooth necklaces and wow. began to panic. 
<laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Okay, so Shannon, in closing, uh, Kevin, thank you for being a maniac. Yeah, uh, thank you. Our kind of coming yeah. together advice to you is make a game of it. Make that weird necklace. You as a therapist have helped Gareth and I come together. Yeah. So, what do you think <laughs> you're going to do in the? What do you think you're going to do in the end here, Shannon? I think it's worth considering based on my childhood experience that my mom did not save my baby teeth, and perhaps. Ooh. This is just the Connor thing. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to carry that with me. Um, Wait, can I however, can I interrupt really fast on that? Just because I think there's meat on that bone. <laughs> sure. If you find out that your mom didn't save your baby <laughs> teeth, can we get you and your mom on the podcast oh, together? Because yeah. that, that is a really fun for, for, for the admitting. Con for, for the confrontation. You yes. can bring up. Yes. Yes. If you please. can you try to yes. find out via text and if she <laughs> says. I didn't save yours. Can you not follow up and we'll have her, you'll we'll have you both on so you guys can do it on air? Please. Absolutely, yes. Okay, thank, thank you. you. And then I'm sorry I interrupted. Go back to where you were. No, that's okay. I think I really like the necklace idea. Okay, and then I've got a question for you. Sure. You've listened to every episode. Am I too mean to Gareth? As a therapist now. <laughs> what can we do for our relationship? Now no, no, we're, we're asking add, you add, for help. Yeah, uh, okay. Okay, let's, let's let's break this down a little bit. So Thanks. maybe there could be a little bit more compassion. Okay. However, it's a comedy podcast, yeah. so Gareth does have to have a little bit of a you know thick skin. In terms of the compassion, I I do love Gareth. He knows that. Uh, okay. We also he's fine. he's way more ruthless to me via text. Stop it. <laughs> This is, here's what I'll say. Here's why it is okay. If this was just, we start rolling and Jake starts turning it up and I'm going, who is this guy? Yeah. That could be considered, I signed the terms and conditions for this man a long time ago, far before we started this. It's not new. It is, you give Jake, the amount of times where I gave Jake a little bit and went, yeah. Probably shouldn't have said that. And it is a 10 year long bit uh, is countless. That's the thing about this friendship. Like, mm. you know, every friendship's different. You've got a different capacity for ruthlessness. Mm -hmm. So in closing from a therapist, she's saying, I'm doing great. And maybe you need thicker skin. Shannon, thank she, you so much she, for no, the no, call. She's saying that. And she's saying, stop playing with the intros. I think is the bottom line. <laughs> Everything else remains okay. Don't forget to communicate, you guys. Your friendship is very important. Don't forget to communicate. Thank I think that, we do communicate a lot. I think that's true. But this is not about us. Shannon, thank you so much for the call. This has been yes. a real fun one. And yep. if I'm in the Tampa, Tampa area, I'm going to lay on your couch and ask for some advice because I need a lot of help. And you seem like just the right kind of therapist. Yeah, we're going out. Yes. You're more than welcome. I'll show you guys a fun camp. Thank yeah. you, Shannon. <laughs> hey, how are you? Good, and you? Good. You're here with the Garf Man. Ones and twos. Hi. How you doing? What's your name? Where are you from? And what's your problem? This is Lance from Tennessee. Lance, and Tennessee. My problem is a few years ago, my wife and I rescued a dog and she is the light of our lives and the pillar that holds up all of our mental health. And so that dog like rescued you. Oh, Jay. Yes, we could oh, say Jay. that. Um, so like all caring pet owners, we constantly think about the fact that she's going to die at some point. And this is yep. fair. This is a thing that you just hit Gareth's heart. He just looked uh, back. I at have the a stand up joke about this. It is. Yes. What, yep. what, what's okay. the bit, Gareth? Yeah. What's the bit? Hold well, on one second. Well, they Lance. should live longer than us. And it, half of your enjoyment of the pet is you can't ever leave. And my next pet is going to be a parrot because they live to be 140. OK, keep going. OK, so my problem is when the dog passes away, I would like to get her stuff. And that way, I never have to really say goodbye. She'll always be here. Uh, my wife thinks it's weird and is not on board. And I would like y'all's help to convince her that we should get the dog stuff. So just to set this table a little bit, Garf. Yeah. Hey, Lance, are you 100% serious that when this dog passes away, you want it stuffed? 
Yes, I'm 100% this, serious. Okay, interesting. This is not a crazy thing. So let me ask you a couple questions, Lance. How old disagree. is the dog now? I would disagree. It's a fine ahead. thing. Uh, how old is the dog, Lance? She's about four right now. So okay, you're doing it real early. He's in love. I never want the, to say the, goodbye. And there's no medical issues or anything like that. You just want to get this already established, right? Correct. What, ki what kind of dog? She's a pug. And what's her name? Her name is Ronnie. Ronnie the pug. By the way, Beautiful. Ronnie, a four-year-old pug, I got to say, Lance, pretty cute. I love pugs. I know they have breathing issues, but there's nothing funnier to me than when you get a pug excited. Pug, an excited pug is just like, yeah, yeah, and you're like, what's behind the corner? The pug's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, this is a very straightforward problem. How do you convince your wife to and, stop? Yes, and where, where is she at on this, Lance? What's her kind of, when you've brought this up to her, you're both in love with uh, Ronnie. You're both eager, and you say, I'm so sad and scared about her dying. And she goes, I know, but let's enjoy the time now. And then you said, uh, when Ronnie dies, I'd like, you know, I'd like to have her stuffed so we can save her. What did she say? Absolutely not. 100%. Right. What is she, as, as on board as I am, she is the opposite direction. Does she have a yeah. counter pitch or is she just like, let's go the traditional ashes. route? Yeah, and ashes. Breathe? Yeah, uh, ashes. Just ashes, the traditional route. Yeah. And so when Gareth started this call, Lance, and he's when Gareth started this call and he said, this is totally normal. I'm with your I'm with your is it your wife or your girlfriend? My wife. I'm with your wife on this one. If my wife wanted to have one of our animals stuffed, I would be a no. And I think the Garf man would be a yes. So this is going to be an interesting one because I, well, this show I, is we're on your side. But I don't know if I'd want a stuffed dog in my house. Go ahead, Garf. Well, I uh, I have had I took care of a senior dog for probably the last three or four years uh, who passed probably three months ago at this point, which is crazy. And it was the worst thing ever. Um, and I went through a lot of the, and it wasn't even fully my dog. It was my friend's dog who I took care of a lot of the time. And listen, what you're, I, I'm not going to necessarily uh, try to give you advice on how to convince your wife. This is what, and then at the end, maybe I will, but this is what I'll say. There are many options along the lines of how do you keep the presence of the animal in your life without having a stuffed dog. The downside to a stuffed dog, I'm weeping. The downside to a stuffed dog is that what if they don't get it right? It, what if it, you know what I mean? It, what Taxidermy what if the is eyes a slippery are weird. slope. Yeah, like- you, But hold on, you, Gareth, Gareth, we can't change the premise of this show. I'm not going to. So, <laughs> I will say I have a number of things that remind me of the dog in a great way. But that's that not what Lance, thing. Lance isn't talking about so here's go to the, go to the beach and write a poem about a senior dog. So here's what I'll pitch. <laughs> I think what you say to your wife, and you have a long time to get the slow pitch out. Hopefully. Yeah, Jake, is what you do. Is Don't get you, that pug too excited. Is what you do is you tell her that at the end you want it stuffed but you'll just keep it in a private spot for you where you can go Ooh. and talk to the dog when when you feel right about it or when you need to see Ronnie. She doesn't need to know. Real weird and, stuff, Gareth. This, and, is a, this is a and, real and weird maybe you have three minutes. An attic or a <laughs> real weird three minutes. Started with the senior dog, then went to and maybe you have, out, then you a, have a private <laughs> area in your attic. Real you have weird a rough telling three minutes. Lance, I'm going to jump in and save hey. a good friend of mine. <laughs> I'm going to jump in because Gareth is emotional and he's spiraling. We started talking about a senior dog and he, he went to a really weird place. So here's what I'm going to say to you. I would say if you're really going to do this, you need a multi-tier plan. The first thing you got to do is you got to find the place that you uh, could have this dog stuffed. So it's a real plan. Listen, Jake, you're amazing. I mean, the <laughs> Uh, keep going. Uh, but that's right, right? So the yes. first thing, Lance, is I would and uh, I would find a place that does this. Because right now it's just an idea. And for the idea, I think she's kind of like, no, we're not uh, even talking about it. But there is going to be a come a time where you're going to have to make this decision. So if you have a place, you know how to do it and you know how to execute it. And then once you've got that place in mind, 
you could find a place in your home that you would like to honor Ronnie. And you would say like, well, I think this could be the place for Ronnie. Garf? Oh, I'm just catching my breath. You still there, Lance? You still with us, bud? I'm still here. Okay. Uh, there is also this other option where there are places that will make a stuffed animal version of your animal. It's just not and what so he's saying. so that way you don't... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, then what Jake said is right. I mean, just I, get I, the Garrett, I've got a question. For... Yeah, And I'm not looking for you to get emotional. I'm not sure. trying to press buttons here. Don't. Have you ever thought about this with Jose? Oh, my God. Uh, uh, yes. I've thought about... I Honestly, I've I've gone the route of cloning as possible. There are clone options. So, Lance, if you want me to ruin your marriage further, I'm more than willing to throw this firecracker into the Lance, room. have you ever considered <laughs> cloning? We we have jokingly talked about cloning. You've got okay. 12 years to turn a funny bit into a great pitch. Well, the stuffing started out as a bit, and I kind of no. won myself over to it accidentally. <clears throat> so I I like that y'all's approach is... Here's seriously. what I'll say. Let's go this route. Abandoned stuffing, pitch cloning, when she's like, that is insane. Stuffing now doesn't seem too bad. Or here's a here's a thought, Lance. When you were to say you would want to have Ronnie stuffed and saved, do you care where Ronnie's body is then featured? No, we could bring her out for holidays. Lance, or, I don't or, think Jake's or, or going not. in that but, direction. But well, here's where I'm going with. So I just need to know if this is just a bit for you or not a bit. Do you really want Ronnie stuffed? I do really want her stuffed. Okay. But I don't necessarily want her stuffed and mounted in the house and full display at all times. So that's exactly where I was going with. So I think we can win here. I think what I would do is I would find a place. Then I would find a really classy, essentially like old suitcase, but like one of those like hundred year old, like magicians cases where you put all the stuff of Ronnie's, like her blanket, her toys, all her favorite stuff in there. And then you could put Ronnie in that too. Now, your wife never has to open that old magician safe. But why cremate when it's essentially the same trouble that you would do, that you would keep in your attic for you, and one day maybe show your children, maybe pass it on, maybe not, but you could say to your wife, this is something that I want to do for me, and here is the solution so it doesn't weird you out. I'm not keeping it in the living room. What do you think would happen if you presented it that way, Lance? I like the doggy diorama approach. I think we can yes, make that exactly one work. Yes, exactly right. And a diorama that could close. So, because I'm with her if she's like, I can't go in my fucking living room and see a stuffed pug. It's weird. But and then you know, if you it's don't like the to. Super Bowl or some big event that Ronnie liked, Ronnie can come out for that. Exactly, Jake. And what do you think, Lance? You think this is real? <laughs> We've lost. Yes. Peter. Yes. I we talked. This think, is Gareth's weak zone and he's spiraling and we're going to have to talk for about 30 minutes after this. It's fine. And Kevin already knows we're having a big meet and greet about all the animals and all the I emotions. have a lot of stuff, a bug all around the place. You can do a ton of stuff. It's just it's great. Lance, if you want to get my email, I'd love to sidebar in some of this stuff. We can kind of keep going outside of the call. Go ahead, Jake. Lance, what were you going to say? Uh, I was going to say we can um, maybe combine a couple of these ideas, do the doggy diorama approach and maybe if i track down someone to do it i can put together like a little presentation proposal um, i think that is kind of make it real yeah, i think you nailed it. it i think what i think you have to shark tank it i think you are 100 percent right lance i think you got to take it out of the idea and you got to present it with a real pitch and all you're asking her to do is say yes and if she and says yes, she never has to hear another word about it. It's all finished. But, you know, for example, when we all die, we're going to have to have plans of what happens to our I'm going to be stuffed. Ashes. I will be stuffed. Can you mute the Garf man? I'll mute myself. <laughs> I just will be stuffed. <laughs> so, Lance, I think you're 100% right. I say let's shark tank this. Let's make a real plan. Give yourself six months to a year and present a real pitch to her. And when she feels uncomfortable, which she will, because what you're doing is very weird. She's going to feel very odd about this, but you then say to her, all I'm asking you to do right now, honey, is say, okay. And then we never have to talk about it again until hopefully in 15, 16 years, however 30. long that put 30, however long that peg is going to go, you get to then say, remember the plan. And at that point you can reevaluate, but you do have a plan. 
I like it. You going to do it, Lance? I am. I'm going to start working on my slide deck immediately. And so I think that's great. And now, can you do us a favor tonight? Can you give that dog a big piece of pepperoni and kiss it right on the goddamn face? Because right now, that dog's alive, Lance. You still got Ronnie. I'll give her all the treats she wants tonight. Why don't you give that dog about a week and a half of nonstop affection and just live right while you got her? I will. I feel like this call was like a host, a professional hostage negotiator and a drunk grieving man trying to team up. <laughs> <laughs> Jake handled everything well. <laughs> just kept saving me from myself as often as possible. Lance, thank you uh, for the call. Thanks, Lance. Thank you all. See you, buddy. I'm going to jump in and save a good friend of mine here. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>